Hey, abortion fans. Uh, <laughs> what's up, everybody? I'm at uh, Recoil Audio in Phoenix, waiting for a shipping tanner to show up so that I can help them offload it. Because I think there's only like a two hour window in which we get to keep the container. Otherwise, it costs like, I think it's like $100 an hour after that. But anyways, I was, uh, wow, fucking Texas, Jesus Christ. Um, let's, let's talk about abortion, right? I know it's not an audio thing, but you got to understand what this is really about. This is really about human rights. This is really about, um, do you have the final say about your body? It's nothing to do with women. It has to do with everybody. So except for babies. You got to understand that babies are the only ones that need to be, what's the word, chosen for. Okay. So, and here's the thing. Killing babies is wrong. Everybody knows that. That's a given. Nobody's saying that killing babies is right. Nobody's saying that. What they are saying is that really, well, actually nobody's saying this, but uh, I learned from Peter McWilliams' book that there's nothing you can do about people's lifestyle choices, right? Or even life decisions. Those are theirs, right? And even if you believe in God, they got to go, you know, to the afterlife and talk to God about that. That's for them to have a meeting with Jesus, not you. So stop telling people what to do. Please. It just makes trouble for everybody. As far as abortion goes, what you don't understand is that if you don't have abortion, there's there's so many other messy consequences that are worse. And um, the, the thing is, you can't do anything about it anyway. There are millions of people, millions of parents that purposely kill their children and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, whether it be, you know, crib death or, you know, uh, an accident, you know, there, I was reading a couple of news articles recently about people like kicking a three month old, you know, those people should probably not be parents. Uh, but you know, that's only one of thousands of people that have kicked a three month old and still have been parents. So you got to let people out of the biological contract. Because if you don't, then you end up with a society of just unwanted pregnancies and unwanted children and unwanted adults later on down the line, and then they just go to jail. So then your jails are full. I mean, I can, you know, I can hear Texas politicians, well, good, they belong in jail. Like, you know, you could avoid all that had you just stepped out of other people's business and let them deal with their bodies the way that they think is right. So, um, this is not going to last this, this, uh, Texas abortion thing. And then putting out a bounty for tattletales, that's, it's ridiculous. And so, you know, if you know, this is ridiculous and they know it's ridiculous, what's really the game plan here? Really? So what's really going to happen? So you got to understand that the people in charge can't ever do exactly what they want. So they have to do it in a weird way indirect way right so like you know 9-11 that there was so many people involved in that uh, and it had so many moving parts um but you you can't just say hey we want to go to war and oh yeah the guys that are helping us we pay them off with all the gold that's in the the vault down in the basement and you know and all the records are destroyed on building seven you can't just say that so you have to create a diversion or some other thing in order to make an excuse. So, um, you know, Biden and company allowed this or whatever, this thing to go through so that they could do something else. So now we have to find out what they're going to do. So what you can do is just sort of think ahead. You know, what's their agenda? What are they trying to do? So the same thing with Afghanistan. Uh, uh, one of the theories that I put forward was that, um, you know, if you make a crisis there, um, you're more able to get the people out that you want to get out. 
And then the only people left are the, you know, the crusty Taliban motherfuckers that, you know, want to tell women what to do and run drugs and all that stuff. And, you know, which is fine. But, you know, what, what, what that does is like, I'm, 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 it makes them a target. So that now the justification for, uh, as I said in the, in the, I think it was like a Facebook forum. It was, uh, like Ripley from Aliens, you know, she's like, well, nuke the site from orbit. <laughs> so you have to look at the bigger picture. There's, there's over, I think it's at least a trillion, if not two or $3 trillion worth of minerals there in Afghanistan, uh, and the very lucrative, uh, opiate trade. So that's not going away. Uh, you know, just like big oil is never going away because there's so many trillions of dollars that still need to be harvested. That's, there's just, you know, there's too many people uh, being fed by that and, and support that. So, but I wanted to let you know the world is not falling apart. Jesus is not showing up. Um, and even if you're trying to trigger that shit, you know, some, some Christians get weird and they're like, you know, this some sort of whatever symbol or temple and built being in Jerusalem. Whatever. None of that shit matters. None of that shit counts. And you certainly don't want to... Uh, trigger anything because first of all you have to think about what if you're wrong <laughs> right even if you prayed about it and you fasted and and you've you pondered it and god's talked to you what if you're wrong right what if god's not really talking to you right i mean that's a fucking superpower if, if god can talk to you believe me i know I know. And, and even then you're like, what if I'm wrong? Right. And that's, that's really the critical thinking. Like, what if I'm delusional? What if I'm the problem? So, and, and those are good, healthy questions to ask yourself. Am I making things better for everyone? Not just some people, but, um, no, I just wanted to let you guys know, I love you. I'm thinking about you and, uh, I appreciate all your comments, even people that are sour pusses and um, it was funny. I, I had Ari yesterday. We were, we had to run a bunch of errands in Phoenix and drop off to Robotis and, um, he got to be in traffic with me, which was, which was interesting for him. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, we were in the old Ford and, uh, you know, getting over in that thing is, is tough because it's just this big block of cheese that n nobody likes cause it's ugly. And, uh, um, there's a couple of people that were like in traffic and rush hour traffic and they're like honking at me because they don't want me to get in front of them. And I'm like, I just wave like, Hey, thanks. Like I'm, I assume the best about everybody, not the worst. And, uh, he's like, that guy hates you. And I go, yeah. So like, I got to get over in traffic, dude. I'm getting over to that carpool lane. Cause there's two fucking people in this thing and, and we can do it. And, um, uh, but he was really concerned about how other people are in traffic. I said, dude, people are just bitter in traffic. There's so many angry, bitter, little petty pieces of shit that, you know, like as I've said before, they go to their shitty job that they hate every day and they commute, you know, an hour and a half a day, uh, sometimes both ways. And that's, that's all they do. That's their whole life. So, you know, they, they go home and they, you know, whatever, jack off to some weird porn or whatever. And, have a secret life and blah, 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 you know, or whatever, play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, focus on you and don't be so worried about other people's opinion about you or even what you're doing. That's your business. That's your life. So I was talking, we, we had this, I had this, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I, I had a conversation with Sherry this morning because Sherry, you know, was raised Christian and she's from the South. And so she has a tendency to decide, you know, kind of, you know, abortion's bad. And so I have to explain to her. And so of course, afterwards I tell the joke, I say, you know, do you feel better after I mansplained to abortion to you woman? <laughs> so she, she laughed and, and you got to just, the real trick about issues like this is you got to consider other perspectives. So one of the ones that really helped me, um, Cher was in it and she was a executive producer on it was, um, if these walls could talk, it's a really great program. I think it's three or four vignettes. Um, and it talks about, you know, uh, olden times when, you know, you had to go underground for an abortion, shit like that. So just like, you know, um, you know, I think I was watching Quentin Tarantino talk about how 
the fifties were, you know, the aftermath of war and all that kind of shit. And, um, it was like homogeny and that was Brucey. And then, uh, it's just, you know, homogenized, uh, society where everybody gets along and everybody does the same thing and nobody's gay and nobody's, there's no Negroes and, you know, <laughs> or Negroes in other place. That's the, Oh my God. So, but, uh, um, you know, that, that world, that, that the thing that you saw in fifties television and, and promoted by fifth Avenue does not exist. It never existed. There was more teen pregnancies in the fifties than, Oh my God, than you can imagine. It was insane. And, and you know, the way that the, the people dealt with that, it was like shh, secret, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you, you don't have to live your life like that. You don't, you know, um, now you, if you choose to live your life the way that you see fit, guess what? You may not have as many friends as you think you do. And that's one of the things I've learned real quick. So, uh, I think I was talking to Ari yesterday about, um, sort of that expression, you know, like, and it's especially, you know, if, if you're, if you're gay, oh God, that's still taboo. Yeah, it can't be gay. Um, and you know, and you got to go live with the gay people and, and go be gay and, and live this weird lifestyle. And it's, it's the dumbest thing in the world. So, you know, just leave people alone, let them go be gay, let them be the kind of humans that God created, right? God doesn't make any mistakes. So it's not your job to go out and correct the mistakes, motherfucker. That's, well, that's all also how you get in a fight. You know, you start putting your nose in other people's business, start telling them how to live. Uh, and that's never good. So, and you know, what's funny is historically, uh, whenever you see that, it's a little bit of that. But what it's, there's always some underlying thing, like, you know, the oppression of natives in this country, that's really about land and resources. That's not about hating Indians, um, or natives, whatever. Um, it's so funny. I, I still am self-conscious when I say Indians, even though there's like dudes from India that I know. And I'm like, well, they're Indian. <laughs> like somehow Indian is a bad word. It's like, no, that. It's, it's dumb and it's silly. It's just like celebrating Columbus Day. That's one of the most horrible days to celebrate. Um, and it should be, you know, something different. But again, until somebody stands up and does the right thing, shitty things will continue to happen. And so that's what I encourage you to do. And, you know, and just be aware that um, shitty, th you know, life is shitty, but it needs cleaning up. It needs people that are responsible and it needs um, attention. And so if, if you're not willing to do that, then you're just as bad as the problem. So, you know, it's, it's forever vigilance. So I remember seeing that, um, I think it was like either Liberty or justice or something like that. It was outside the cop station at Hickam air force base. So I got to be a cop for like six, eight months or something like that. Uh, just on base. It wasn't like a real cop, but, uh, um, <laughs> they gave me a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and I got to stump, I got to step on the, uh, the sergeant's head. That was fun. Cause he, he played intruder out on the flight line and, and the people that were, uh, SP's security police, uh, there that were supposed to be doing their job. They weren't. And so I had to fucking step it up, yo, step it up, bro. I got to be nice and butch for the cops. It was great. They rewarded me. They were like, that's good job. That's what you should do. And I was like, okay, good. So <laughs> my dad would have been proud, but you know, Dad's dad was never proud of me. <laughs> like a like a lot of young tender boys out in the world, their fathers are never proud of them because you know I don't know, they didn't kill enough and they didn't uh, fuck enough and <laughs> they didn't watch sports enough. The dumbest things in the world. Um, I the, the boys are getting ready as you can see. Larry's got his little baby car out, his little electric car. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video because it's. 15 minutes almost here and I'm a man, a white privileged man that just talked about abortion for 10 minutes. So, uh, that's my two cents for society. Uh, and of course that it, I'm being facetious. That's it. I, I, I hope to encourage you guys watching this that, you know, for you, for, for good men to do nothing and women and, and gays and trans people, whatever. Um, for them to do nothing while evil happens, you're just as culpable. And so it's important to stand up and do the right thing. And 
there's there's also a huge responsibility in that in that if you don't speak up if you know the answer and you don't speak up i mean i can't tell you how many times i thought uh, you know, what if, what if one of us has the cure for cancer? What if one of us has the cure for, you know, whatever, but we're too shy or oppressed to speak up and do something about it? Everyone suffers. Everyone. So uh, be brave. Um, be subversive. You know, uh, getting the message out there isn't always obvious, and you certainly don't want to protest. I swear to baby Jesus, you do not want to protest in this country. All you do is get put on a list. So do not do that. And it doesn't do anything. It's like, like what? Well, like, look at the million woman march that happened when Trump, you know, became president. The only thing that really happened was Ma Madonna was able to monetize that shit. And good for her. She monetized the fuck out of that during her speech. Uh, and she got paid. Good for her. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, as old as she is now and as weird as she looks now, I would still eat her pussy. I still eat her butthole. So, um, uh, uh, anyways, I love you guys. I will talk to you later.